welcome to Jubilee Camp Meeting from Christian Center Cathedral of Praise in South Bend, Indiana. Dr. Lester Sumrall invites you to join him for dynamic praise and anointed preaching with believers from all over the globe. Let the Spirit of God touch your heart and change your life today. And now, come with us into Jubilee Camp Meeting and proclaim God's liberty throughout the land. Welcome to Jubilee Camp Meeting 1995 from South Bend, Indiana, Christian Center, Cathedral of Praise, hosted by Dr. Lester Sumrall. You know, we're going to proclaim liberty throughout the land. God wants his people healthy, free, full of faith, full of joy. We're Pastor Scott and Kim Anderson from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and it's our pleasure to host you here tonight. We want to declare God has something wonderful for you. You know, sometimes if we would just understand how God wants us to have good things, every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above. And it's his good pleasure to give us the keys of the kingdom. You know, if he freely gave his only son for us, how much more will God freely give us all things? So tonight, we're going to believe God's word. We're going to believe what the Holy Spirit is doing and what the Holy Spirit will do. And the will of God for your life is that you would prosper and you'd be in health even as your soul prospers. So this next couple hours that we have together, we're going to enjoy every blessing from heaven Amen. tonight. Amen. Who's our speaker? Amen. We have Pastor Ulf Ekman yes. from Uppsala, Sweden. It's going to be good. If you're in the South Bend area or the, one of the surrounding suburbs, yes. you have time to get here. You, you, you want to be in the service Amen. for this one. Amen. 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 It'll be good. He'll have a fresh message from heaven. And, and your life will be changed. If you can't make it over, then stay tuned and just worship with us by TV because you're going to be blessed tonight. Amen. Pastor Rolf Heckman. Now, right now, the, the worship team, David Powell and the, and the Christian Center Choir, they're singing, The Name of the Lord is a High Tower. Let's go in there and declare that throughout all the earth. Bless his name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Righteous run into the it. Righteous run into They are it. singing. And they are singing. What do you tonight? The name of the Lord is mighty strong tower. A strong tower. Righteous run into it. Righteous run into it. They are singing. And they are singing. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Sing it now. tonight. Come on, let's give God glory tonight. Did you come to give Him glory? Hallelujah. Give God the glory. Give God the glory, give God. 
Jesus is against you. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Is against you. He's not welcome here, no. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Oh, yes, we know. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Oh, yeah. So let us hear of God. So let us hear of God. Oh, yeah. So let us hear of God. God of the prayer. We gotta say it one more time now. Say it. Satan, the blood. Jesus is against you. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Come on, talk to him. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Anybody have victory? Does anybody have victory in the house tonight? Hallelujah. Do you have victory in your house tonight? Come on, shout unto the Lord. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name. Bless that 
Come on and praise Him. Come on and praise Him. Shout unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you have joy tonight? Do you have victory tonight? Do you feel the Holy Ghost tonight? Come on and give Him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. Well, he's filled with compassion and his mercy is everlasting. God is good. God is good. All the time. God is good.
Double. Camp Meeting 95 Jubilee. Craig Wallen here with Kimberly Ann. We're so glad you've joined us. Scott and Kim Anderson will rejoin us in just a little bit from the church. We're broadcasting live from the studios of LaCie Broadcasting in South Bend, Indiana. And this is Camp Meeting. We're bringing you next to the last night of this amazing week of music and ministry and we're glad you've joined us from wherever it is you're watching and the see ministry touching over 90 percent of the entire earth through yeah. radio and television and we're extremely privileged that you've taken the time to join us kim it's been a great day and i know you spent mm -hmm. last night manning the phones after our broadcast was over again taking calls from those who are calling the prayer line yes i did uh we finished here about 10 and then i went up and i was on the phones for a little over an hour and I tell you we had six backed up right away and it was absolutely incredible and uh, I'll probably share a little bit more you know if we'll have some time a little bit more to share with you about a few different people that I talked to it's just amazing you got to be ready so that just tells me how dedicated those prayer line people are I mean they're there and the number is 1-800-365-3732 so just know they love you they're ready and prepared for you so you call. All righty. Alf Ekman tonight. Tomorrow night we'll conclude with Steve Muncy, Dr. Summerall in the morning tomorrow from Christian Center. And folks that are calling tonight can not only talk to a prayer line counselor, but they can order those tapes from the entire week of camp meeting. And it's been a great week of Jubilee. And boy, I'd want to get the, a tape or two if I were you out there, oh, either yeah. audio or videotape. Yeah, and I tell you, they come in this nice looking thing here, and it's just uh, it's a really nice package and uh, we've got three different packages for you all the jubilee colors and i tell you what all of the jubilee everything's in it bonanza and treasury and everything package number one for 125 dollars is jubilee 95 and it's the audio tape bonanza the full collection of all the morning and the evening services also the luncheon program and then i'm just so tickled because these are absolutely fantastic, fantastic. packages You're right. for 175 package number two is jubilee 95 our videotape treasury it's a treasure a video collection featuring every single evening service and then for 250 you get it all it's the jumbo thing <laughs> jubilee 95 the special value total library that includes all of the audio tapes of the morning and the evening services all of the luncheon programs the entire video collection of each evening service and then a special bonus that we threw in for you for free full audio and video collection of the bob harrison breakfast program which was this morning whoopee hey mm -hmm. great super duper yes. we uh, want to tell people that during this week of camp meeting we only have really tonight and tomorrow there's a special opportunity for you to be a part of the holy land tour which is taken each and every year, actually twice a year, once in November and once later on first part of the year uh, in, uh, I think, February. Mm -hmm. And a very special offer in conjunction with that Holy Land tour. And we'll tell you more about that as the evening progresses. But right now, back to the church, Christian Center Cathedral of Praise, Jubilee 95, and Scott and Kim Anderson. Hello, folks. Hey, praise the Lord, Craig and Kimberly Ann. God bless you. It's a wonderful night to be alive and living for Jesus. You know, in a, f in a few minutes, Pastor Rolf Ekman is going to be preaching the Word. Now, uh, all I can think is a man that has changed lives. Uh, he, he testified last night over 900 churches that they've started in Russia uh, that, he, that they know of because it just keeps spreading. Now, this winter, I went on a trip with Dr. Summerall. I went into, uh, oh, we were in Switzerland and, and then into Kazakhstan and then up into Moscow. We were gone for about 12 days. It was a real privilege and honor to be with this man of God mm -hmm. but you know every time we met these pastors these pastors would say to Dr. Sumrall I remember the first time you preached I remember the first sermon I remember what city we were in and I remember what God spoke to my heart and uh, Dr. Sumrall many years ago spoke uh, the word of God over Alf Ekman when he was a student at Rama Bible College and he told him he had faith to change the world mm -hmm. and that young man at that time believed the word of God and walked in what God had told him he could do and now look what's happening now the next question is how about you and how about me we have faith to change the world see God God just didn't limit it to one or two men he wants great men and women of God everywhere so once we let this Word of God work in us who knows what the limit is Amen. I'm just I'm just thinking of through one man's obedience just like Abraham mm -hmm. all the many great things that happened just through That's Abraham good. Through one man's obedience, through one man named Ulf Ekman, mm -hmm. what God has been able to do in this world. Just think what God could do through two people who yeah. would obey the call of God in their lives, or through, through uh, three people or a hundred people. Yeah. How many church people? Full of church full of committed people. Oh, my. Just imagine what one local church can do to change the world. Yeah. 
one church can one church change can a change city world. Yeah. and can touch nations. Well, you know, we found that in our church in Kalamazoo. You think, what can one church do? We're, we're so hooked up with Feed the Hungry, we're a part of the thousands of souls that have been saved. We're part of feeding the refugees in Rwanda and Azerbaijan. We were there in Moscow. We were there in St. Petersburg. I mean, we have literally, as a church, been all over the world. We, we sent tools to the orphanage in uh, Tarana, Albania. Remember when the communism fell, they said, we need to remodel this place. So one church in Kalamazoo, at that time, we only had 70 people. But yet, we were able to help somebody with what God had put in us. You know, and, and I said this last night on the broadcast, but it seems that God is bringing us to a place where we're not only like little orphans saying, feed me, bless me. He's taking care of that and positioning us so that we can bless many others. Just as we're doing through this broadcast, God did it through a man named Le uh, Lester Sumrall. He can do it through an Elf Ekman or through Peter Youngren or anybody else. And he's looking for an avenue into your life. And we certainly want to pray with you and extend our faith with you. You know, this week during the Jubilee Camp Meeting where we're proclaiming liberty, there have been thousands of calls to the prayer line. And we don't want that to stop. We want more calls yet tonight. Amen. Not just for number sakes, but we realize every, every person that calls their life is real before God. You're not obscure and, and obsolete and, and minute and all those other things. Your life is very important to God. And, and God's interested in you having a quality life and making a difference. So thousands of people have called. Mm, that's wonderful. And, and, and what more can take place? We've had miracles all week long over that prayer line. Amen. That's wonderful. And I'm thinking of the scripture in Genesis 12 and 2. Mm -hmm. The Lord told Abraham, he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you great. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing. Mm -hmm. So... God wants to bless you because he, wa he loves you and he wants to bless you, but he also wants, you to, he wants to bless you beyond what you could ever ask or think so that you have something to be a blessing to somebody else with. Yeah. I was thinking early in our ministry when we first started the church, we're, we're four and a half years old now, uh, our children were able to take part in, in giving toys to the children in, in was right. it Guatemala. 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 Yep. Guatemala, just a small children's group of mighty warriors wanting something great and they were able to do a blessing and then it helps other true. children because our children in America are so blessed and that they could reach out and it's good to, yeah. to bless the poor and to bless others. So God wants to make you great and he wants to bless you, but his whole purpose is so that you can be a blessing, that you can mm. share and spread the gospel throughout all the land and let somebody else see the love of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and preach it, huh? Amen. And, and it also, Jubilee Camp Meeting, we're proclaiming liberty throughout the land. I'll tell you, God will do anything to get you in a position to fulfill your call on your life. He wants you healthy. He wants you prosperous. He wants you full of faith and full of joy. He wants you baptized in the Holy Ghost. He wants you moving in the gifts of the Spirit and sensitive to the Holy Spirit. He wants you to be confident in what, in what you're called to do and called to be. Glory be to God. So just step up and say, God, here I am. Use me. You know, that's what Isaiah said. Well, here I am. Use me. Of course, you'll never be qualified enough or talented enough, but then again, you will be anointed by the Holy Ghost, and you won't need much more than that. Even people watching right now have the, have the capacity to go into other nations or change the city that they're at. Sometimes we talk about going into other nations, and this nation needs changed. Our cities in America need changed. Our, our, our politicians need to have some holy representation in their life to know that they're accountable to godly people. And God's not looking for other people to do it. He's looking for us to do it. Amen. So be bold and be strong and say, hey, I'm a blood-bought believer, and God, God's going to do wonderful things in this nation. Yeah, amen. I was just thinking as you're talking about changing our city and our state and our nation, but I just feel prompted to tell you this today. First of all, let God change your home. Mm -hmm. let, him, let him first change your home. I was thinking Pastor Rod said the other night, he said, uh, Dr. Summerall taught him to first believe God for a donut, then yeah. a wedding cake. Yeah, Remember seven that? Seven-tier wedding cake. Yeah, seven-tier yeah. wedding cake. And sometimes we wonder why our faith isn't working because we're trying to believe God for the big thing and we don't know how to get the small thing. Mm. But it also works in our relationship with Jesus. It also works in our relationship at home. You know, we can't live one way at home and then put on our church face and go to church and act holy. Yeah. Yeah. We, we are the same all of the time. We live Amen. and, and you, you live a righteous life. And so I, wanna, I want you today, if you're that person that at home you, you know that you're living two different lives, let's yeah. focus on your home today. Let's get, let's get mama and daddy right and our children right. And then let's take our family to church and build a strong Amen. family. Because see, 
Strong churches come from strong families. That's right. If we'll first get it right in the home, we'll have it right in the church. Amen. But the problem is that we, we have it wrong in the church because we don't have it right at home. <laughs> Amen. That will preach. Amen. 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 We, weak Amen. homes and a weak church. But, you know, we have the ability. Somebody asked us the other day, uh, you know, it's been so exciting doing the TV broadcast. It's, been, it's just been so exciting working live here. And they said, well, you're, you're so natural with the cameras. So we're, we're like this all the time. Whether there's a camera on us or not, we're joyful. Uh, we're, we're not one way and then another way. We just, that way if the cameras catch you, you know, it's just you. You know, so the life of God is very real in us. You know, we want you to, to call the prayer line. Some of you, tonight is the night you're going to be set free from cigarettes, from that nicotine, that bondage of nicotine. See that right there, you want to be bold as a Christian. And you say, well, it, that won't send you to hell. And I don't think smoking will send you to hell. It'll, you, you'll smell like you've been there. You know, but what it does is it heaps condemnation on you. You want to go up and testify to somebody, but yet you know you can't do it because you smell like smoke, and they, know, they see that pack of cigarettes there. Uh, and so it, 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 just, it just places you to where the devil can beat up on you. So tonight, you're going to be free from that if you'll just allow God to do it in your life. You know, the best, best way to do it, I remember one time a guy I was working with said, I want to quit smoking, you pray for me, and you help me. I said, okay, I'll pray for you, but hand me your cigarettes. He didn't like that. He thought it was going to be something, but he had to get his will involved, and his life was changed when he stepped out of that. So God's going to do powerful things. Amen. He's going to change lives. Yeah. Amen. He wants to change every life today. So Amen. if, if you are... are uh, wanting someone to pray with you, you need to call the prayer line. Our, our counselors are there. They want to pray with you. They're oh, anointed. Amen. They're filled with the Spirit of God, and there will be an anointing to break that addiction. But you'll have to do yeah. your part. You're going to have to yield to the Holy Ghost. Amen. But the other thing, as you're talking about whether it's smoking or drinking or whatever it is, the Bible says that our body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, and that we aren't able to do whatever we want with that body. Amen. That it, it, it belongs to God. It's a sacred thing. Yeah, it is. So it's not good for you. It's not healthy for you. Also, uh, it, it's going to be so wonderful. Some of you are released bitterness and all kinds of things tonight. And the prayer line is available for you. So take full advantage of it. Call us. We want to pray with you. We want to minister with you. So call us. Right now, we'll go back to the studio to Craig Wallen and Kimberly Ann. Lord bless you guys. Those phones are going to ring tonight just as they have all week. Amen. Well, they might not be there yet. <laughs> well, glory be to God. But Jesus will still answer prayers. So the yep. prayer line is available for you. Craig, are you there now, brother? Yeah, we, we've been here. I was just adjusting my tie, Scott. Uh, Craig, you are causing that, them is that, problems. Is it it's straight fine. now? Thank yes, you. Thank you very fine. much. Uh, we are glad that you've joined us. 1-800-365-3732. They're having a good time there at church, huh? Yes, they are, and we're having a good time here. So. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I wouldn't mind being there now and then, but... Yeah, it would be nice to mm -hmm. be able to maybe switch roles with the yeah. Anderson so we could yeah, go to what? church one of these nights. <laughs> but uh, that's not going to happen. Mm, we're, it's not. <laughs> we're going to spend the rest of the night here and uh, take your phone calls, mm -hmm. as we said, and listen to some great music. Galen Slaughter from the... Henry and Hazel Slaughter lineage will be here in just mm -hmm. a little bit. You've heard of Henry and Hazel, haven't yes, you? Yes, I have. Uh -huh. you, you, what, about five minutes ago? <laughs> yeah, something about like that? four minutes she, ago. Uh -huh. She never had heard of Henry and Hazel Slaughter, but that's a great family of uh, musicians, and Galen Slaughter will join us in a little bit. But we do want to remind you that prayer line counselors are waiting for your call, so call them right now. Here's Galen. Go down to I see them 
a song here during camp meeting 95 jubilee and we're having a great time 1-800-365-3732 is the telephone number and we are receiving calls right now from those of you requesting prayer and also from those of you who are ordering tapes both audio and video and maybe now would be a good time kimberly to hit that list one well, more time maybe now huh? would be a good time i think we should we've got three great packages for you package number one for 125 dollars is Jubilee 95, the audio tape Bonanza, a full collection of all of the morning and evening services, also the luncheon program for $175, which is package number two. It's Jubilee 95, which is our videotape treasury for you, the video collection featuring every evening service. And then $250 is package number three, that's Jubilee 95, and that's a special value for you today. The total library includes audio tapes of all of the morning and evening services, plus all the luncheon programs, the entire video collection of each evening service, I think I know this by heart by now, plus the special bonus, the full audio and video collection of the Bob Harrison Breakfast Program. All right, mm -hmm. Bob Harrison was here this morning delivering a, a great message, I'm sure, on finances and how it relates to the Bible and the Christian way of living. Bob Harrison's special breakfast, a part of that offer when you call that number on your screen, 800-365-3732. Off Ekman, Kim, yeah. tonight. Great. From Sweden. 
Sweden. And I wonder if the Ekmans know your family over there. You're, you're going to be heading over there soon, aren't you? Oh, sure. Didn't you say in the next year or two? I don't think I said, Craig, I, you're imagining things now. You would it's like to go over it, there. You sure would. Yes, I most certainly would. Well, I tell you what, Alf Ekman has really done a work in Sweden. In fact, his church, his Bible school mm -hmm. is the largest in all of Europe. I believe it. And uh, he's going to share a little bit about that, I'm sure, tonight. And also uh, tell us what he's been up to. Mm -hmm. He's a renowned speaker and author. You're going to enjoy mm -hmm. him, Alf Ekman, tonight. Mm -hmm. We're going to go back, though, to 1992, give you a little glimpse of Alf Ekman here in Jubilee 95. Harvest. Now, when we read this, and when we read the Great Commission, many times we, we um, emphasize the going part. And, and it's okay to do it because Jesus said go. But actually, the Great Commission is not just going. It's going, preaching, it's going, training, it's going, teaching, and telling them everything that Jesus taught us. And if we don't do that, we don't really fulfill the Great Commission. Now, when we see what Jesus is saying, to go, to go into every nation and to uh, preach the gospel and to reach people all around us, I mean, you can feel helpless. You can say, well, I have no chance. I don't know how to do that. And that's why Jesus gave us the precious Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. This is called a Holy, Global Holy Spirit Conference. So um, I want to talk a little about, about the Holy Spirit as your helper and my helper and the Holy Spirit helping us to fulfill the Great Commission. Because many times we emphasize the Holy Spirit in uh, what He is doing inside the church and the different gifts of the Spirit and, and how the different gifts relates to each other. But when Jesus spoke about the Holy Spirit, He said, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, when you are anointed, it is to become a witness. Amen? And witness to every nation. You start in Jerusalem, but then you go into the whole world with the power of the Holy Spirit, enabled by the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you are enabled, if you are released by the Holy Spirit and listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying, then God will give you great success. Now, God wants us, and Jesus said in John 15 and 16 that we would go, that He has called us to go, and that we would uh, bear fruit and fruit that would remain lasting fruit. And the way we do it is in and through the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit, and the Bible says it's very, very clear, will take everything that is in God's heart, everything that God planned, prepared, and thought, and He will uh, take it because of the blood of Jesus, because of what Jesus did on Calvary, and He will make it very, very plain, very simple, and very clear into your life, so that you will explain, uh, you will understand exactly, and the Holy Spirit will explain what is on the Father's heart today so that you can understand it, what uh, the Father wants to do because of the work of Jesus Christ, so that will be carried out in and through your life today. For that to happen in your life, you have to submit yourself, not just to the, uh, to the Godhead, to the Father as God and Father, not just to Jesus as Lord, but also to Holy Spirit as God and teacher and guide in your life. Now, when you submit yourself, you actually are saying that I don't know everything, which is very simple to say. I, I don't know everything. I don't have all the answers, and I don't know exactly where God is leading me. Remember Paul, that he was just preaching on and preaching on, and he wanted to go to Asia, and the Holy Spirit forbid him, said, no, you're not going to Asia. So then he went on, and then he was trying to do something else, or to get into Asia anyway. And the Holy Spirit said, no, no, you're not going to Asia. Then the Holy Spirit led, led him and opened up the door for him to go into Europe. And when he came into Europe, God released him into a great ministry in Europe. So praise God. Jubilee Camp Meeting, proclaiming liberty throughout the land. Alf Ekman talking about some of the missionary work around the world. And you know what? Uh, we're going to hear more from Alf Ekman in just a little bit, so don't you dare go away. I want to remind you, prayer line counselors are standing by to pray with you, whatever your need happens to be. And Kimberly, we've been hearing from people from all over this country of ours mm -hmm. and points beyond. And yeah. we would encourage you to call. Don't hesitate. Call right now, 1-800-365-3732. 
and uh, you're going to tell us a little bit uh, later on about some of those calls that are coming in. But right mm -hmm. now, we're going to go back to the church. Scott Anderson is standing by, and Scott, if if you're ready, go go ahead, Scott. Oh, praise the Lord, Craig. I need to know is my tie straight though. I, I just want to make sure that thing is right there. You know, I was dancing around and it got messed up. That happens to me quite often. <laughs> Hey, what we want to know is if you watch that event and you say, I saw him straighten that tie, you need to send in a $10 love offering in honor of the straightening tie ceremony. <laughs> we would appreciate that. We'd receive it in Jesus' name, and it will help preach the gospel. It's good to have fun, you know. It's just, it's just good to, to be free in Jesus and not be all caught up in it and to have a straight tie. You know, tonight's going to be powerful. Pastor Rolf Ekman is, gonna, is going to preach the Word of God. You know, and God has used him so mightily in all the earth. If you're still in this in South Bend area and Elkhart and Mishawaka and, and the lower Michigan and, and anywhere in this region, you have time to get here. You don't want to miss what God's doing. Mm, amen. It's going to be it's going to be wonderful. Yeah. Once again, there's been all the different gifts, different um, mm -hmm. kinds of administrations of the gifts yes. of the Holy Ghost, the preachers and the ministry gifts. And tonight is going to be a different gift. But it's going to be powerful. Yeah. It's going to be unique. Pastor Rolf Ekman has a unique way of ministry, just like Pastor Rod Parsley has a way. But when we minister, we have a unique way yeah. of ministry. And tonight is going to be different, but it's one Lord, one Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's a different administration. It's a different administration. It's going to be good. You know, sometimes that's our, that's our biggest yeah. uh, hindrance, is that each night of ministry here has been different. Yeah. God has used a different vessel in a different way, but got the same results. People have gotten saved. People have been healed. They've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Some have been inspired. Some have been challenged. Some have, have corrected their lives or whatever was wrong. But God used different people. So as a believer, I mean, we've learned never limit the voice of God into your life. I mean, uh, many times you can get this, only one person can talk to me, and uh, you're going to miss so many ways that God can speak to you. You know, and tonight, Pastor Rolf is going to be powerful. Last night, Phil Pringle was unusual, but he was powerful. Amen. You know, and we told him that before. This man's not going to be your typical preacher, but he, he, you know, people were saved, and people were healed, you know, and the power of God was so evident, you know, so we can't limit what God wants to do. You know, as you watch, we're expecting the Spirit of God to speak to your heart. To, to challenge you in different ways, to say, come on, you can rise up, you can do more, you can be more, you can believe more of my word, you can accept your position as a new creature in Christ, uh, and I can use you like I can use anybody else. And so it's going to be wonderful. Uh, just just to have the word of God sit before us. You know, so many times as Christians, we, we put God in a box. Yeah. And we, we contain him, and we, we limit God. When, when, when we're staying in this little realm, God wants to go into the big realm. Mm -hmm. And so tonight, God is going to expand you. Yeah. He wants to take every limitation off your life. He's going he's gonna to put a new That's and good. a fresh commitment into you. You know, the children of Israel had fresh manna every single day. Every day. And that manna met every need that they have. Well, today, there's fresh manna in the house of God. Glory it's going to meet your need today. It's fresh from heaven. Mm -hmm. It's going to bring a new commitment into your life. It's going to bring new things, new changes, new challenges. But the power of God will be there. I was thinking um, <laughs> Sunday night when Richard Roberts spoke. Yeah. He talked yeah. about the lady that wanted to be healed. Yep. And uh, one, one minister went to lay hands on her. And she yep. said, no, I, I'm saving that for Oral Roberts. Yeah, he went to lay hands on her. Kenneth yeah. Copeland went to lay hands yeah. on her. And she said... Right, she said, I'm no, saving that for Oral. I'm saving that for Oral Roberts. Well, sometimes as Christians, we do that. That's we only true. say, God, you can minister to me one way through one person. Yeah. When the Holy Ghost is limited, Jesus is, I mean, excuse me, unlimited. Jesus is unlimited. God the Father is unlimited. And we need to open up our hearts that the Spirit of God can speak to us however he wants to. Yeah. So, so let's say this. Tonight, the limitations will be broken off of your life. You will find it easy to believe what God has told you and, and, and the pastors that are watching, their vision for their church and for their city and, and their actual calling is going to swell within them. Yeah. And, and I don't know what man has told you, but the Bible says, let God be true yeah. and every man a liar. So if God said you're going to go to the other side, you're going to go to the other side. It doesn't matter what man has said. Men will always hold you back. Have you ever noticed that? They'll always limit you. They'll say, yes, but, and, well, maybe you can do this, and, oh, be careful. But God says, go. 
and do this and be this and you'll have success. And so, you know, we want to believe the Word of God. We want all limitations broken off of our life. We want all limitations gone. We want to run our full course with the gospel. We want to be like the Apostle Paul. He said, I have finished my race. That's right. That's right. When, when, I, when I stand before the Lord, I don't want to hear, I, I, I want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I don't want to hear, well yeah, yeah. You know, just, well, <laughs> well, we did part of it or some of it. I want to hear, you did everything that I yeah. asked you to do, and you did it well, you did it faithfully. I want to hear, well done. Amen. And and I know that there are ministers out there that that uh, tonight, as you watch or you come into the service and you hear Pastor Ulf minister, yeah. your commitment to, your, to what God's called you to mm. do is going to be strengthened. God's going to put a new zeal in you. He's going to put a fire for the things of God Amen. where you're not going to care about the natural things anymore, but you're just going to say, I need to be like Paul. I'm going to finish my course. I'm going to do it with everything God has called me to do it with. It's going to be wonderful. Amen. You know, time is too short to waste another day, another hour wrestling with God. We just, we, we might as well just surrender yeah. and say, God, here I am. <laughs> I, give, I give you my life. I, I present it as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to you, which is my reasonable service. And just step into what God has for you, uh, r regardless of what realm it's in. You know, but, but tonight, you're going to be around a great man of God. Yeah. That, that has accomplished things, but yet he's going for more things. He's not satisfied with not what he's done. Yeah, he's not comfortable. That's, a one, that's wonderful to say that. It's been great what he's done, but he's hungry for more. See, now, when you're in the presence of great men, you'll become great. The Bible says that iron sharpens iron, and the countenance of a friend will sharpen the countenance of his friend. See, when, when you're around weak people and, and small-minded people, it's easy to be that way. Mm -hmm. But you get around somebody like this who will challenge your fears, challenge your insecurities. Mm -hmm. who, you're going to have to change. Amen going to have to come up. But see, God's looking for these people. This is the end time reapers, what Peter Youngren preached, man. This is the end time workers for the gospel. That is us. That is everybody that's watching. So what we, you know, we want you to be a part of this, to be used by God and to just be everything God's called you to be. So call the prayer line through the course of this night. You can do it right now. You can do it while Pastor Rolf is ministering or when he's done ministering, but we would love to hear from you. You know, if you have not made the decision to live for Jesus, yet you've been watching, you, you might have just been flipping through the channels and say, oh, look, look at this guy here with the straight tie. Hey, it's not by accident, it's not coincidence. You're looking at a guy who used to be strung out on drugs. Amen? <laughs> they still say I'm a little kooky, but that's just, just because I'm free in Jesus. But if you have not tonight made the decision to live for Jesus, tonight's your night. Today's the day of salvation. You need to surrender. Call the prayer line, and they're going to pray with you. They're going to help you find the Savior. You know, and that's what that, that's what that drug addict is looking for. That, that's, what, that's what that alcoholic is looking for. You have a void inside of you, and you're trying to fill it with money, with pornography, with alcohol, with all kinds of things, but there's only one thing that can fill that void in the soul of a human person, and that is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right, and that's what the Bible says, that the whole earth is crying out for him. Yeah. And they, you, don't, you might not know that's what you're searching for, but it is. It is the answer. I just feel really impressed by the Spirit of God to just, to just, just want to pray with you right now. And, and, and just in the name of Jesus, just lift up your hands and just yeah. surrender to the Lord and say, Father, tonight, not my will be done. I submit my will to you, but I ask that your perfect will of, of God, your will, would be done in my yeah. life. And you open up your heart, and God's going to come in, and he's going to do great things. He's going he's to change their, their lives and their hearts. It will be a turning point. Yeah in your life. It, it will cause the, the, the will of God and destiny to, to come to pass. Amen. It's going to be That's good. That's wonderful. Yep. Tonight is the night. Tonight is the night Pastor Ol Feckman is going to be sharing in just a few minutes. And so we want you to stay tuned and we want you to have your faith extended. And for heaven's sake, don't think, well, this is just one man. God is looking for hundreds of thousands of men and women just like this great man of God to step up and say, I will fulfill my destiny. Right. You know, we all have something. Even tonight, there are certain people that I can reach that other people can't reach. And there are certain people that you can reach that I can't reach. And so we must do this. We must all do our job. So be ready. Now, let's go into the sanctuary for the ministry of Pastor Rolf Ekman. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's raise our hands. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's just raise our hands. 
and praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just lift your voice to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shihila baba khasika bahati. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you. We honor you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for each and every one that's here tonight. Thank you, Father, for every plan that you have, for every word that you have planted, for uh, the power of the Holy Spirit to make that word come alive in each and everyone's life. Thank you, Father, for every vision that you have given, every word of direction, and that you've promised, Father, that everything will come to pass. So right now, Father, if there's anybody here that's uh, despairing, that's lacking of hope, and that just turned their eyes in the wrong direction, I pray, Father, that you will revive their inward man so that they will uh, know who they are in Christ Jesus and know what they have and know what they're supposed to do. Father, I thank you that any form of indifference, any form of attraction that has to do with the world will leave each and every one of us, Father. And I just pray, Father, that the love of Jesus will be very strong. Jesus, you're our master. You're the Lord of our lives. And we love you, Jesus. Just start to praise him a little bit where you are. Oh, Jesus, you're wonderful. Oh, Jesus, you're wonderful. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. She but a minute, they live a shabra bananda la carriera, man of Oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah! We love you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. She brava men, Hallelujah! 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 In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that covers each and every one of us. And when we truly repent from our sins and when we uh, come to you father there's tremendous forgiveness and you blot out every sin every trespass hallelujah so we thank you father for the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses and gives us life we thank you father that you forgive us everything when we repent and when we turn away from it <laughs> Is not a part of us anymore. We thank you, Father, for the righteousness, your righteousness that we have in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Do you want to play all the blood of Jesus, brother? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Ah, Jesus. Amen. You know, it says in the Bible that we come to the Father through uh, the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only way we can come. You, you cannot just come. Just, just play, just keep the same tune. You don't have to go out and do different. Just keep it real simple. Amen. The gospel is simple. The Holy Spirit is simple. The all truth is simple. It's very powerful. Now, we cannot come to God except through the blood of Jesus. Amen? That means everything has to be covered in my life by the blood. If there are things uh, that are not covered in my life 
and I try to come anyway, I cannot come. Because I can only come through the blood. So if there are stuff in my life that I have not repented of, things I don't care about, I just cling to it. It's not God, but I still cling to it. It's impossible to come to God. Don't look so happy. <laughs> you see, uh, yeah, the prayers will just go up. Of course, God will hear your prayers. But there's no uh, power, there's no strength. If there's not a cleansing and covering of the blood. So it's because of the blood. It's not because of your selfishness, your religiosity, your spirituality that you come. It's because of the blood you come. Amen? It's not because of what you have done. It's not that you came here tonight. It's because what he has done. And he did it 2,000 years ago. On the cross. Amen? Nothing more important than the blood. Amen? So let's just uh, sing that song a little bit. Oh, the blood of Jesus. sing, you approach the throne, and when you draw nigh to God, He draws nigh to you. Amen? When you do it, it's uh, either very refreshing or very frightening. You know, the Bible says it's really frightening to come close to God, but it's also very refreshing because when you draw no, nigh to Him, when you come close to Him, uh, if you're prepared to uh, let Him cleanse you, let Him... Uh, deal with you, if you accept the dealings of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, it's a wonderful experience. If you don't accept the dealings of the Holy Spirit in your life, <laughs> it's a very, it's a terrible experience. But I don't think that's what you want tonight. You want a good experience tonight, don't you? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, uh, when you start to praise Him, uh, if something starts to happen in you and you just feel a little funny, it's the, it's the Holy Spirit dealing with you to uh, help you to get rid of some things in your life so that you can more freely praise Him, have, uh, more um, strongly feel the anointing. The anointing does not touch your personality. It touches the blood. Because of the blood on the altar, there is fire from heaven. Because of blood on the altar, there is fire from heaven. It's not because of your personality. It's because of the offering and the blood on the altar that the fire hits. Are you sad or are you happy? should be happy. You know, we got what no other people on earth has. And what the high priests in Jerusalem didn't have. We have access to the Father 24 hours a day. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, so the Bible says, come boldly before the throne. Now, if you've got something against anybody, you cannot come boldly before the throne. Jesus said, you know, before you cast your mountain into the sea, <laughs> go and... Uh, before you come to the altar, go and take care if you got anything against anybody. Amen? Let's just raise our hands and uh, praise Him a little bit. And as you sing this song, the Holy Spirit deals with you. Take care of it. Because when you do not any longer have anything against anybody, boldness comes like never before. Freshness and the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit comes into your life like never before. So let's raise our hands and sing it. Don't sing it emotionally. Don't look even for an emotion. Don't sing it religiously because out of, out of duty you sing the song every once in a while. Sing it because you approach heaven now. Amen. Let's go boldly before the throne. Are you here tonight or not? Amen. Let's go before the throne a little bit. Okay, let's sing it. Oh, 
the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Sing it. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It was as white as snow. Your Lord? Jesus. Who is your Lord? Jesus. Who is your Lord? Jesus. Now, what does it mean that He? What does it mean that He's your Lord? It means that He uh, is the one that gives the direction, the commands, and you and I follow. Amen. It means that His will is my will. My will is not His will. His will is my will. I don't ask of him to follow me. He asks of me that I would follow him. It's not my conditions, it's his conditions. It's not my ways, it's his ways. Amen? Amen. So if he is your Lord and your Savior, then the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all unrighteousness and iniquity. And you have fellowship with the Father, and we have fellowship with one another. Now, when you have fellowship with one another, you can look people in their eyes and be happy. If they don't like you, you still like them. If they got something against you, you have nothing against them. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's sing this song again. Amen. You say, why do you always sing this song? Well, it's about the only song I know in English. It's a good song. Oh, oh, the blood. Let's sing it again. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white. As snow. Father, I thank you that the blood of Jesus washes us white as snow. Father, I thank you that we can come before your face. And if we need to, we can and we will repent. We'll turn away from sins, weaknesses, and transgressions. We do not want to have it in our lives. So we ask you and we thank you for your mercy, Father. <laughs> we do not forget your mercy. We thank you for your mercy. And we do not think, Father, for a second, for a minute, that we can live this life without your mercy. We are dependent upon you <laughs> every day, every hour and every minute. So we thank you for your grace, for you are good, and your mercy endures forever. Yes, you are good. And your mercy endures forever. You are good, Father. And your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah! 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 Oh, Shila Narakahaya! Oh, Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. <laughs> Father, we thank you for your love. You are so refreshing when you come in contact with us, Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit. You refresh us. And we thank you, Father, for that love. We do not have to control our lives by our thoughts, our thinking, our ideologies and theologies. No, no, we come to you, Father, and we thank you. We do not allow any controlling spirit. To try to stop the flow Oh, that river of life that's on the inside of us, Father. Oh, we let it flow, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's say like this. I thank you, Father. For forgiveness. I thank you, Father. For your grace. I thank you, Father. For the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father. For your word. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus, I am forgiven. I thank you, Father. In Jesus, I am clean. I thank you, Father. In Jesus, I am dedicated to your purposes. Thank you for forgiving me. And I release forgiveness to anybody and everybody all around me in Jesus' name. You know, words are very powerful. Sometimes you and I say words we do not... Oh, we shouldn't have said them. Have you ever said a word that you shouldn't have said? You know, I know ministers today, I mean, even their ministry is attacked and, and is going down because all the words of criticism and negativism, negativism that they spoke, all that stupid telephone calls they shouldn't have made. But they made them anyway. Have you ever made a stupid telephone call? Oh, that gossiping spirit, you know, isn't it terrible? Well, we're not going to start in condemnation now. We're going to go into great freedom here tonight, but uh, we'll have to start in reality. Amen. Amen. Have you ever said a word you wish you didn't say? Yes. One or two of you, huh? <laughs> oh, let's take all those words now. Let's take them and break them. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Anybody ever remember a telephone call? You say, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, yes, of course. Of course, let's all take them now, before we get in here. I look so sad, brother. Be happy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Let's all take whatever it is, whatever the Holy Spirit reminds you of now. Words of vain words. Oh, words are so important. They're so powerful for good and for bad. Let's take them now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, I thank you. Oh, Rabbi Khadili Didi. Oh, that I can come before you. Oh, turn away from every vain word of negativism and criticism or whatever. Gossiping or whatever. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, forgive us. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name. Oh, and we break in Jesus' name the effect and the power of those words. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You don't have to be so quiet. You can pray. Can't you pray? Just pray, you know. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, oh Jesus' name. Now, if you, uh, if you uh, ask, oh, God, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Then you stand on holy ground. You stand on the blood in Christ Jesus, then you can break words that have been spoken about you. But if you got something, you know, blah, 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 going on, you can't pray. You can't, you know, break things off others. And you can't protect yourself either. You have to be where you're supposed to be in the spirit. Are you here tonight? Or... Oh, that's wonderful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So now you can, now you can uh, forgive, and you can just break that whatever you know or what you don't know. Somebody might be saying a word or two about you, Mr. Perfect out there. Maybe they were right, but it was wrong anyway. And maybe they were not right. And you can just break it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Take where you are. Just pray where you are. You got your own motor. You got your, the Holy Spirit is in you. You can pray. You can forgive. You can break in Jesus' name. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
Father, we thank you. We thank you for the power of forgiveness. We thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, we break every vain word that's been spoken. Uh, oh, in Jesus' name, any form of cursing, whatever it is, every form of negative and critical word, we break its power. And we forgive anybody that's spoken in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. can forgive it will not affect you because the world around you is not perfect and people around you are not perfect and they're gonna say stupid things for the rest of your life but if you can forgive it will not affect you <laughs> it's wonderful yes 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 but if you don't forgive you get caught snared by those words and they start to bring you down and steal that dream that the Lord gave you just steal it away from you it doesn't have to be stolen from you you can keep it for the rest of your life amen, amen. you believe that amen. yeah just think about somebody that's really ugly you don't like just forgive them right now out of your heart just release love right into that situation come on right now come on church are you here you're not just a passive church that sits on a pew sits in a pew you're you're the do you doers of the word aren't you amen amen so let's just just do that now just let that forgiveness go out let it go out because there's miracles there there's miracles in forgiveness Yes, there's miracles in forgiveness. Just let it flow out now. Let it flow out. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let it flow out. Yes, it will set you free. It will set them free. Oh, let it flow out to that person. As you think that you do not like that, you just get upset thinking about that person. Let it flow out. Just decide with your will. I love you. 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 I bless you. I bless you. I pray for you. I pray that it will be well with you. I pray that you will prosper. I'll pray that you'll be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, you and I were ugly, but Jesus saved us. Amen. If he could save you, that was a miracle. Then he can save anybody else. See, so if you've got some people around you that you don't think are holy and sanctified enough, God can do a miracle with them. And with you and through you amen maybe God just put them there to work on you I'm not saying that their lack of sanctification is God's thing no 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 no. but maybe God just placed them there close to you to help you I say I don't know if there's any help or not it's a big help patience and love and forgiveness how many times am I supposed to forgive amen why don't they behave better why don't they grow in grace well why don't you <laughs> get your eyes off those people and get your eyes off yourself get your eyes on the Lord amen hallelujah get your eyes on the Lord Get your eyes on Jesus! Hallelujah! Ha, ha. Yes, glory be to God forevermore. Then he can heal you. He can heal your hurts. 
I believe he will tonight. I believe he will tonight. He can, he can heal your disappointments. <laughs> when things didn't go the way you wanted it to go. When you tried to work out God's plan, it didn't work out. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. There's so many frustrated, disappointed Christians. You don't have to be one of them. You don't have to be one of them. Amen. I'll tell you one thing more. It's one thing to laugh in church. It's another thing to laugh out there when all hell breaks loose. It's one thing to get the Holy Spirit tickle you a little bit on the ribs so you laugh another thing to have a river of joy flowing out of you in circumstances that are very adverse. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore. Yes. Oh, I got a river of joy flowing out of me. Do you know that song, brother? I've got a river of love. Flowing out of me <laughs> And the blinds you see Sing. Somebody got to fix this sound. It's like a, we're right in the war here or something. Do you sing River of Joy or River of Life? River of Life. Sing River of Joy. River of Joy. And, and I, a little faster. I've got a river of joy flowing out. Of Baby! Makes a lane to walk at the blind you see. Don't look at me, kind of, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> yeah, that's amusing, you know. Now sing it like you really mean it. Sing it like you really mean it. Yeah. And don't sing it like this. I got river of joy flowing out of me. Sing it like you mean it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There's any resistance, break it. And sing it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. like them, hug them anyway. <laughs> Bless them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. 
Okay, now you can be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now in John's, cha in John's gospel, <laughs> not in John's chapter, <laughs> in John's gospel, chapter 4, Jesus is speaking to the disciples. They're always off somewhere a little bit. Are you a disciple of Jesus? <laughs> you know, we get off a little bit many times. Uh, because we are what we are, you know. I'm not saying what we are in Christ, but just what we are as human beings. We drift off a little bit. And we miss things every once in a while. Do you ever do that? Praise the Lord that the Lord is our shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd. Hallelujah. Amen. So they were off a little bit. And um, he starts to speak to them. And uh, when he speaks to them, he says like this in verse 32. He said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Well, that is, that is a resource that Jesus had that uh, they didn't know of it. They didn't tap into it. They were bound or they were dominated by the natural circumstances. You know, this is the story of uh, 12 people walking together, 11 of them going off to lunch to buy lunch for 12. And then they, when they came back, they missed the miracle. And the miracle was the woman at the well. Are you here tonight? Yeah, yeah so they missed something because they got carried away. They drifted off. Uh, they got into the natural. They got hungry. You know, you can be, you can be physically hungry for something and, and, and it, it pulls you off. Certain times, it's natural in other circumstances, but just certain times it pulls you off. You can be uh, uh, soulishly or psychologically or emotionally hungry for things, pulls you off. You can, uh, you know, have a certain longing for a certain manifestation of a certain aspect of God and it pulls you off. Even uh, though you think it's God and everything and you kind of desire it, you can move from the spirit. You are a spirit being. Hallelujah. Amen. But you can move out from that into be a very emotional being or a very... Uh, willful, you know, you're strong, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a will, you should have a will and a strong will, but you should be submitted to God. And God's will is stronger than yours. Amen? So you can get pulled off. Sometimes people are. Many good Christians are still frustrated Christians. And there's always a reason. You can be fr frustrated because you're trying to do something and you say, I know I'm called to do it. Yeah, but if you're called to do it, there is an anointing to do it. And when there is an anointing to do it, there is a devil that wants to stop you from doing it. <laughs> he doesn't care. If you're not anointed, he's not going to mess with you. He'll be somewhere else messing with another one. But if there's an anointing on you, he does not like it. We say, yeah, but then I get frustrated. No, you don't get frustrated. You even enjoy it. Because there is an anointing there to pull you over. Amen? Yeah. But if there's no anointing there or not enough of a lack of it, and you're trying to do something, then you get into this pushy ram. There are a lot of pushy Christians. Push here, push there. Trying to make this up. Trying to do this. Trying to get this to happen. Relax. Now, don't relax too much. Well, this is a word you can say to others, and others will take it, you know, definitely in the flesh, you know. <laughs> so, but let's, let's believe tonight you're spiritual. <laughs> Amen. Stand in faith for that. Amen. <laughs> then you, then you, um, you got to relax. Now, who is your Lord? Jesus. Who saved you? Jesus. Who's your shepherd? So who leads you? Jesus. Who speaks to you? Jesus. Who's going to finish the job? Jesus. Amen. Amen. And in between there comes faith. Amen. Amen. Now, if God speaks to you, he's going to see because of his glory, not glory, 
not your glory, but his glory, that every word that has been spoken, speaking to you, will come to pass. That is not your job, it is his job. Praise God that we are not the Holy Spirit. Some people try to be the Holy Spirit. But it's very frustrating experience. We are not the Holy Spirit. We cannot make it happen. The only thing we can do is to obey. Then it's the job since ages ago. It's been the job and the office of the Holy Spirit to make it happen. He is the confirmer of signs and miracles. Amen? Yeah. Now, there is a river flowing out of you, and that is a river of life. It's a river of joy, and it flows differently through different people because of different circumstances, different purposes, different mandates and directions. Now, there is a flow in your life, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and that flow is going to increase in your life. But really, you cannot make it increase. There are certain things that the Bible says you can do, but I'm not getting into that. Now, basically, God will let the life flow through the vine. Amen? Now, this is not a passive message. Remember this. But it's just uh, certain things I want to say before I go into something else. Now, God will let the life flow through you because he promised that. Amen? So what does that mean? Well, that, that means that then he is obligated to let it flow. Flew through. Flew, oh, I get this English. I wish, this is, I, usually I speak in Swedish, but this is, I'm not in Sweden now, sir. <laughs> so anyway, wouldn't do you any good. So he will let it flow. For where you are, for where you are going, and he knows what you can bear and what you can do and what you are supposed to do now. There's no sense in being frustrated about things that has not happened yet. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. How can you flow into a stronger and greater anointing if you're not happy? thankful and using the anointing you have now. The fool's paradise is not the same as the dreamer's vision or the visionary's dream. The visionary's dream is from heaven. It's put in his spirit and it turns him into a dreamer, a godly dreamer. A godly dreamer will dream things that's been put there by the Holy Spirit. You don't just sit there and say one day, I'm going to dream big, my neighbor has a big car, and I'll dream big, and I get a big car, he's got a big house, I'll dream big, I get a bigger house. It doesn't start there, it starts with heaven. So heaven puts something into your spirit. Amen? That's the life, that's the water, that's the word of life, that's the river of life flowing in you. That's those words that will come to pass and, though, and that will create the miracles you need so that whatever you dream and see will come to pass and become a reality. Now, if those words are from heaven and just your, not just your empty imagination or you want to imitate somebody else or you want to do what everybody else does for the moment, you're a little trendy Christian. We got a whole bunch of trendy Christians. Oh, yeah, they want to do what everybody else does. Oh, you do that now? Okay, I do that. You do that? Oh, I'll do that. <laughs> Act like nuts. <laughs> Not going anywhere, just spinning around. Yeah. Why? Because they're uncertain. Because they've got to have the latest. They've got to know. They've got to confirm themselves all the time so that they know that they're at least are not too backslidden. <laughs> no, I'm serious. So whatever is the latest thing going, they jump right into it and bomb, they hit themselves. Now, I'm not saying that God is not doing new things and we need to get into every good thing God is doing. I'm not speaking about that. I'm speaking about the imitation, the solical imitation of the true thing that God has in the spirit for you. If you need something, God will give it to you. If you need something, what do you need? Healing. Well, God will give it to you. What do you need? More joy. God will give it to you. What do you need? A breakthrough. God will give it to you. What do you need? More freedom. God is eager to give it to you. He's more eager to get it to you than you are to receive it. 
because there's nothing wrong with God. If there's anything wrong here, it's with you, not with God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, most Christians don't want to hear that. Anymore. There's nothing wrong with me. I've heard about some churches that don't like him. This is, now I'm going off a little bit. I'll just a minute on this one. They don't like what you have this um, uh, ad admonishing and uh, rebuking and exhortations. Do you like exhortations? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody should like exhortations. Yeah. Some people say, I don't like when the preacher exhorts me. He's not supposed to do that. He's supposed to give me a little Bible lesson and then leave my private life alone. That's crazy. You, you cannot be in the church and say, I do not allow the ministers in the church to exhort me, rebuke me, correct me. Then you don't read your Bible straight. Get your glasses on straight or get them off probably. Well, you know, I don't believe in membership. I just slip in and slip out. Well, that's what most people do. They, they slip all the time. You belong somewhere. You belong somewhere. Are you a child of God? Yeah. Are you a child of God? Yeah. Well, he loves his children. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. And you know how he loves his children? Hebrews says very well how he loves his children. He loves them so much he spanks them. If they're true children, he... We have a law against that in Sweden. Against spanking. So I went to court once because they don't like for us to do that. But the Bible says that God does it with his children. And if he does it with his children, we better do it with our children. Yeah. But that, that's a different story. I'm not going to preach on that. And don't sell this video in Sweden right now. <laughs> I'll get in trouble again. <laughs> now we don't get in trouble. We go from glory to glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But if your attitude is, don't touch me, I sit where I want to sit, I do what I want to do, I come whenever I want to come, I belong wherever I want to belong, you haven't understood anything yet. You haven't understood what it means that Jesus is your Lord. Jesus is your Lord. Jesus is your Lord. You have abdicated. He's been put on the throne. You're not on the throne. Your emotions are not on the throne. Your stubborn will is not on the throne. Your carnality is not on the throne. Your uh, escapism and your desire for all kinds of experiences are not on the throne. Jesus is on the throne. Amen. Amen. And he knows how to run his church. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. So, you are a spirit man. And because you're a spirit man, the devil will try to push us out into the natural, into the soulish, and we call that spirituality. And sometimes we just run around in circles and we don't know what we're doing. These disciples didn't really know what they were doing. They were led by their emotions or their flesh or their circumstances. And Jesus said, I have food that you don't know of. What does that mean? Food brings strength. Food brings uh, satisfaction. Food brings joy, food brings health, food brings fellowship. I have health, strength, satisfaction, fellowship, joy, all the time. I have food that you don't know of. I don't have to run away to get it. Now why do I have it? This is what he's saying. Why, and this is a little tricky thing, but I want to touch on it tonight. So are you still with me? Yeah, he says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what that means? There are so many dissatisfied Christians because they don't want to do the work of their father. If you want to do the work of your father, you're going to be attacked by the devil, despised by man, but very satisfied in your spirit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you can, uh, you can uh, choose. Do you want to be accepted by man, have a little religious club, and uh, just be sure that you don't get any persecution, and still be aggravated 
dissatisfied, pushing for more experiences, pushing for more revelation, pushing for all kinds of things, until you're out there pushing for things you don't even know, and a green elephant comes and you think it's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> or do you want to be satisfied in your spirit? Amen? There's only one way to be satisfied. Hallelujah. You say, if you lay hands on me and I'm slain for three hours, then I'll get satisfied. No. I'll pray for you. You're going to be slain in the spirit. But that's not what's going to do it. Oh, if I can see this happen. If I can see that happen, then I'll be satisfied. No, no, no. That's what the world thinks. That's why they go to the movies all the time. And that's why we have turned the church into a movie. And say, oh, let's go look at the latest show. Oh, I don't like this one. This one is better. We're spectators that are being enticed and tickled and entertained all the time. And this poor preacher's got to come in and pump you up and entertain you so you'll last through the night. Then you get into your car and home, you know. No, 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 no. That is not the life of a Christian. That's the life of a backslider, but it's not your life. Amen? Amen? Amen. If you turn church into some kind of variety show, some form of entertainment, so you can survive, you haven't understood church at all. Amen. That's not what church is. Church is entirely different. Amen? Amen. So what is Jesus saying? <laughs> He's saying, my will or my desire and my food is to do the will of him who sent me. There is something right now today that God wants you to do. If you don't do it, you're not satisfied. You can have 15 angels and the Holy Spirit rub you on your back if you want. But you're not going to be satisfied anyway. You'll only be satisfied by obeying. That's a beautiful word, isn't it? Obedience. Hallelujah. Gives blessing. <laughs> Obedience gives strength. Hallelujah. I've met so many people. They're so hungry for all kinds of experiences, but when you talk about them, with them, and when you meet them, some of them are beautiful, others are not so beautiful. Some of them have no notion of giving up anything. They just want to add something to their spiritual collection. They just want another little nice thing, you know, so that their album is full. We're not here to collect things. We're here to give things away. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So, um, I want to read the next verse, but before that, let's go to the book of Judges. Can, are you with me a little bit more? Bana shikura I just enjoy this. Hallelujah. Let's go to Judges, the seventh chapter. Now, God loves you. God loves you. God loved the children of Israel. God loved all the children of Israel. All the children of Israel got into sin. All the children of Israel got liberated. But not all the children of Israel were a part of the liberation. Let's say that again. Judges 7. Now, did you find Judges 7? is the Old Testament. Did you find it? Amen. So, God loves the children of Israel. And God loves you, amen? amen? The children of Israel got into sin and bondage. You and I can get into sin and bondage. The children of Israel got set free, liberated. All of them got into bondage. All of them got set free, amen? Amen? amen. But not all of them were a part of the liberation. They all benefited from the liberation because of Gideon. But they were not all a part of the liberation. It's wonderful to be blessed. It is better to be a blesser. Yeah. It's wonderful to be a receiver. It's much better to be a giver. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus said. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Hallelujah. If you want to choose between the people and Gideon, choose Gideon any day. 
Why? Because he did not just participate in receiving the liberation, he was a part of making it happen also. There are two types of Christians. There are probably five or sixteen, I don't know, but I say two now. <laughs> Amen. Two types of Christians. Now, one is those um, that enjoy and, one other, and, and the other part are those that work. Now, some are those that uh, live for pleasure and some are those that live for duty. There are two types of people. You'll find them everywhere. You'll find them in the world. A nation can have, be a nation of pioneers, adventurers, and people that do tremendous exploits, and they build something, and then after a couple of generations, they are turned into a nation of wimps. And all they want is pleasure and leisure. Yeah. All they're longing for is to relax and get it in the back and enjoy life. You don't need to enjoy life. What you need to do is to enjoy the Savior. Amen. If you enjoy the Savior, you'll have a good life. Hallelujah. But if you're out to enjoy life, you're going to have a miserable life. And you'll be a person that is looking for pleasure. Where can I get pleasure? Well, there's no pleasure in discipline. Let's get away from discipline. There's no pleasure in being rebuked or exhorted. Oh, let's get away from that. There's no uh, pleasure in leadership and order. Oh, let's get away from that. Give me something that tickles me. It doesn't have to change me. Just tickle me every once in a while. That's uh, the type of lifestyle some Christians are given to. And you say, where did they pick it up? They picked it up from the world. Amen. They picked it up from uh, watching television. They picked it up from their parents. They picked it up from their flesh. So they get real, you know, picky, choosy, spoiled little Christian brats. Amen. We have a lot of them. And the problem is, you know, the more spoiled you are, the more picky you get about everything. And after a while, you don't like anything. I don't like this, and I don't like that. I don't like that picture, and I don't like that picture. And they're singing too long, and why do they pay so much? <laughs> and so the whole church gets backslidden. Charismatically backslidden. Yeah. Not just that, yeah, I'm not saying that you're sitting and drinking beer in church, you know. What I'm saying is that your attitude is absolutely un biblical, undevoted, non-dedicated, and you yourself is on the throne. And there's no anointing. So if there's no anointing, let's try to whip it up. You know, aren't we anointed? Now, do you know what the anointing is? It's the Holy Spirit. Now, what did Jesus say about the Holy Spirit? When the Holy Spirit comes over you, I will give you power. I will give you power. For what? To become a witness. Where? In Jerusalem. Where? In Judea. Where? In Samaria. And then to the other side of the world. To the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Don't come talking about your Holy Spirit patting you on the back, tickling you when you don't want to go even to Samaria, where you're dead scared about Judea and you're not even thinking about the ends of the world. That is not the Holy Spirit. It's another spirit. Where the Holy Spirit can tickle you, shovel you, jump you up and down. He can do whatever he wants to do with you. And I, I'm not going to interfere. I'm going to let him do what he wants to do. But don't be mistaken. If it is the Holy Spirit, He will give you strength. If it is the Holy Spirit, He'll give you supernatural wisdom. If it's the Holy Spirit, if it's the Holy Spirit, He will make you holy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore. If it's the Holy Spirit, He'll set your mind straight. 
He'll get rebellion out of your life. He'll clean up your tongue. He'll clean up your act. And he'll get you to witnessing and preaching the gospel all over the world. Hallelujah. Don't say you're a spirit-filled Christian if you never witnessed to anybody, if you've never gone to another nation, you never even care about it. Could not talk to me that you're a spiritual Christian. You're not. Oh, I am. about you. Well, I felt this, and I laid on the floor for 15 hours. So what? So did Paul. He was named Saul, but he got out from that place where he fell, and he stood up because Jesus spoke to him, and Jesus said to him, Stand up and go. I will show you where you're supposed to go. And when he got that revelation in the temple, he got into ecstasy. Hallelujah. He saw Jesus in the temple, and Jesus said, Get out of here because they're not going to receive. Go to the ends of the world. They will receive you. Hallelujah. You guys are really good at clapping. If you clap, clap. If you clap, clap. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Because you're not clapping a few points or a preacher. You're clapping Jesus. He that will baptize you in spirit and fire. You say, well, does that prayer fire make me feel good every day? No, it won't. Will it make me... No. What will it do for you? It will take you to the ends of the earth. It will take you through hard circumstances. It will fill you, oh, hallelujah, when everybody is against you. It will resurrect you when they stone you. It will capture you and make you float where you're in the Mediterranean 14 days and don't know where you're going because a ship has sunk. Then the Holy Spirit will come over you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let's talk about the Holy Spirit. The one, the Holy Spirit, that got Paul in ecstasy when he was in prison. And he didn't even write a whole newsletter complaining about it. He wrote a letter to the Philippians. He, being in jail, wrote to the Philippians and said, Rejoice, rejoice, 15 times. Telling those outside, you guys better shape up. Rejoice, I say. Again, I say. Rejoice. They had problems in freedom that he didn't have in prison. He was happy. He had to exhort them to be a little more joyous where they sat ugh, out in their freedom. Amen? Amen? Have you read the letter of Philippians? It's written in jail. I'm dead scared to go to jail. That would be terrible. No, it could be the safest place on earth. Yeah, Paul found out. The government took him to Rome. They paid all the expenses. They protected him. They got their soldiers around him. They paid the ticket to Rome. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Well, I don't want to, I don't like those circumstances. Well, then you don't like the leading of the Holy Spirit. Well, that's not the life I want. Well, who cares what you want? Amen. It's not what you want anyway. It's what the Holy Spirit wants. Well, we have to pray against that. No, you don't have to pray against that. Just pray that it'll happen. No, I don't believe in that. I believe in favor. Well, I do too, but not with the devil. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Ha, ha. The two last times we went to Bulgaria, they wouldn't let us in. We had 150 people, I think, 140. We had rented an airplane and was landing in Sofia, the capital of Bulgaria. And um, the anti-terrorist uh, patrol, or whatever you call it, came. I mean, these were, these were soldiers with machine guns to, there to stop us from entering Bulgaria, because the prime minister didn't like that the nation was starting to be saved. 
We've had a meeting uh, the year before with about 40,000 people. The Prime Minister got dead scared. The, uh, the Orthodox Church got even more scared. So they got on him, and so I was barred. I was not allowed to come into the nation. I knew that, so I was not on the plane. I went to another city, tried to get in through Thessalonica. And these people came with an airplane. They were all looking for me. I wasn't even on the plane. So our people went down and said, what's the matter? And, and one of our guys was standing there, and this man was standing with a machine gun, you know, and this, oh, they put that on, you know, whatever you call it. Must I was in Swedish. Huh? Mask, yeah, some kind of mask. And he was saying, get up on the plane. And our man said, why? Get up on the plane. You're not supposed to. Oh, yes, we're tourists. He said, we're supposed to be here. And he w they wouldn't let us in. So uh, they were really nasty because they had the order from the prime minister not to let anybody in. But our people were not scared. They were praying, praising God. So they, they were starting to push them off. So he just turned around our man and said, let's all sit down, everybody, in the stair here. So everybody sat. It's very hard to get people back on the plane when they all sit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So they had about 1,500 people in the um, airport, and there was reporters, and there was a big, big mess. So they wouldn't let us in. And then one of these men said, he just went close to one of our guys, and he had the machine gun, you know, and he said, I'm very sorry that I have to do this. And then he pulled up, he said, you see, I was saved last year in your crusade, but I work with this, and I'm under order, and I have to do it. I don't want to do it. Forgive me for doing it, you know. So, that, I mean, that, you'll never get that experience sitting somewhere back in the church yawning. <coughs> Amen. 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 It's something special. We were in Serbia. In Serbia, it's a very interesting place. Nobody goes there. <laughs> Have you read in the newspapers about Serbia? Or you, you don't read newspapers, you watch CNN. <laughs> it's easier, then I don't have to think. I read the newspaper, I have to think. That's hard. So I watch CNN, you know. They tell me what is the truth and what's wrong in life. It's very dangerous. Well, you know, they talk about Serbia and Bosnia all the time. So we went into Serbia. And boy, our, our minister of, of defense in Sweden got very upset with us. and said, you're not allowed in there. He, he, that wasn't true because we were allowed, but we were not allowed with equipment. That's a little different thing. But we had a lot of equipment. So the UN soldiers, they said, what do we do? Because they're going to stop us at the border. We're going down the Danube with a boat. We had, hundred, we had about two, three hundred on the boat and uh, going from city to city and, and preaching the gospel. So we came to the Serbian border. Well, what do we do? Well, we can't just let the equipment off, our loudspeakers and so on. So we said, uh, let's, God, blind the soldiers, you know. Confuse them in Jesus' name. Amen. So what happened? Well, they got on and they looked, what's all this equipment, they said, you know. And the equipment was standing in the discotheque. So the guy just answered, well, this is really a discotheque, he said. So much equipment on a discotheque, he said. Isn't that something? Then he just walked off. <laughs> oh. So then, then um, he opened, where we had our television equipment, they opened up the door. Behind the door was the cameras. But he never walked in. I don't know why, he just walked in and looked. He never looked behind the door, he just looked right in. <laughs> then he took a drawer in a desk. And there all the, all the mics were, microphones. So as he took the drawer, he, he asked the guy, what do you got over here? And then he closed it again. <laughs> you never get those experiences. Laying in bed Sunday morning. Hoping that God will resurrect you so you can go to church. Amen. Amen. You get great satisfaction by doing the will of the Father. Yeah. Ha -ha! Yeah. Hallelujah! God doesn't want you to be a frustrated Christian. He wants you to be a very satisfied Christian. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we went down to Bulgaria, to, to Serbia, and um, God did many miracles in there. I was in Serbia only a couple of weeks ago, again, because they wouldn't let me into Bulgaria. So we asked the Lord, what are we supposed to do? And he said, well, go into Serbia, he said, and, and bring the Bulgarian leaders over. So we had about 300 of them just by the border. 
So the police in Bulgaria call the police in Serbia. And these guys are not like your guys. They're different. Little different. So, so the Serbian police came storming in in our meeting, you know, and said, why are you here? You're not allowed to be here. Don't you know we have laws here that forbid all this? And they got all this news from the, their colleagues in, in Bulgaria. And, and uh, so, but we were right in the service. As we were in the service, we were just praising God, praising God, praising God. I mean, when you have that uh, circumstances, you're motivated to praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, yes. You, have, you don't have any trouble waking church people up. Oh, yeah, yeah, you don't have to ask them to stand up. Shoo, they get up and praise the Lord. I mean, they're very motivated, you know. So, um, so we were singing and praising God. And this Serbian police, you come in, ooh, like this, you know. They were in there for five minutes. And then they walked out like this. <laughs> and they said, have your meeting. <laughs> and then they walked off. They liked the music. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what they really liked, what they really liked was the anointing. But they didn't know it was the anointing, so they thought it was the music. Now, we had a meeting there in Belgrade, and they have a nationalist group that is very ugly. I mean, they kill people all the time. They came into our meeting and promised to break up our meeting. They said, we'll break it up and we will kill you, and they said all kinds of stuff. And you could sense in the spirit they were, they were um, serious about it. Because uh, it was like a spirit of death all over the nation and over that capital and over the meeting. I mean, you could sense it. I truly felt I was going. I mean, the devil kept speaking in, in my head all the way to the, uh, well, as I was dr uh, in the car to the meeting and then going up on the platform. And the devil was saying, now you're going to your own execution. This is how it feels when, you're gonna, when, when somebody is executed. So just prepare yourself. This is the last time you look at these trees. This is the last time you see your friends. Just prepare yourself now because now you're going to heaven. A stupid devil. <laughs> but you could sense it very strong. So anyway, we uh, had a good meeting and then we prayed for the people. And one of these guys came up. He was ugly, had a beard, and he was, and he was doing some, they had some funny sign they do, you know. It meant their nationalistic <laughs> fascist movement, you know. So he stood in the line, like this. And I didn't see it because I would start praying at this side. And I just sensed the anointing. So we prayed and I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed for people. And I didn't see it, but the ushers saw it. So the closer I got, they looked at his face, the more mellow he became. So when I was about six guys from where he stood, he started, you know, to, he kind of took his hand down like this. You know. And then he, he started to stand like this. And then when I got really close, he was... <laughs> and I, I didn't know anything about this because, you know, uh, I didn't see it. I was just praying and the Holy Spirit was there. So, so when I came up to the guy, he was standing like this. And he said, <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you never see that happen on CNN. They don't report stuff like that. It's a different world for them. That's the good world. That's the kingdom of Jesus Christ. He rules and reigns all over this world. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. So you get satisfied by doing the will of your father. Now here, and I don't, I'm not going to get into it, but here there's two types of soldiers. This is Judges 7. I'll do it real quick. Now, there are two types of soldiers. One is sent home and one can stay. One is liberated and one is the liberator. One is the cause and the other is the effect. One is the one that goes straight through life. The other one can say, Hosanna one day and crucify the next. One is hooked on a vision that is, I have seen Jesus, but more, I've heard what he wanted me to do. Uh, yeah. And I cannot stop until the nation is liberated. One is, one has a purpose in life. The other one is out looking for an experience. One wants to accomplish something. The other one just wants to get something. One is prepared to go on for years until the job is done. 
the other one gives up immediately when their will is not immediately done. Question is, which one do you belong to? I say, but I know God wants to give me all kinds of experiences. Oh, he wants to bless you and 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 bless you. But don't identify with a woman of the issue with a woman with the issue of blood all the time. Identify with Jesus. Because you are in Christ Jesus. Don't identify with the one that receives the anointing and get healed all the time. Identify with the one that gives the anointing and produces the miracles. Amen. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So, there are two types of soldiers and they all need water every person needs water it says in one of the parables you know or the parable recorded in one I think is Luke uh, uh, the parable of the the sower that one that the seed didn't fu- fully mature because it lacked moisture so we need moisture we need water in our lives we need a touch of the Holy Spirit we need refreshing amen, amen. So the soldiers that were the liberators and the soldiers that had to go home, they both needed water. It's not a question of water. There's nothing wrong with water. When the water comes, we drink it. Amen. When water, when rain falls, out of the ground comes a crop, a harvest. When the rain falls out of the ground, comes thorns and thistles. The same ground, the same water, the same ground but different seed. So praise God for the watering of the Holy Spirit. But the question is, what seed is in your ground? Because whatever is watered will come up in circumstances where there is a move of refreshing of the Holy Spirit. All kinds of things will come up in people's lives. You'll be surprised what you see. And you say, can this be the Holy Spirit? Well, it's not the Holy Spirit. It's the seed coming up in a fertile and good environment. But it was bad seed coming up, and God wants it to come up so he can cut it off. Because it's been hidden in people's lives, and because of coldness of heart, and because of lack of good circumstances, lack of good spiritual condition, because of backslidden state in the church, they all were like that, and they didn't even know about it. That hidden sin, and hidden unbelief, and hidden rebellion, and hidden hardness of heart. But when the anointing comes, when the rain falls, even that stuff comes up, so God can take it out of your life. Hallelujah! Amen! <laughs> Glory be to God forevermore! But you see, when you drink and partake of the Holy Spirit, how do you do it? What is the purpose and where do you go with it? Because Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall, you shall, you shall be my witnesses. So there's two two types of soldiers. And uh, the Holy Spirit is speaking to Gideon. He said, watch them. Everywhere people are watching. Spiritual people know things. You cannot afford to be spiritually blind in an age like this. It's happened more things in the 20th century that happen all together all through the the existence of mankind. Everything is getting wrapped up. Everything is coming to its end. Got to have your eyes open, brother. So um, Gideon, watch them. Because you see, some, when they see the water, they're just going to jump. And they're going to get in. (sighs) Yeah. And others... They're going to run too, and they're going to do like this. Now, what's the difference? One is self-centered, and one is God-centered. One is getting something from me, 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 me. Me. I don't care about anything else. Me, I want to be blessed. Bless, bless me. I was in a prayer line, Carl and I was in a prayer line in Russia, and we had Armenians. It's interesting to pray for Armenians because they have hot temper. So I passed one and prayed for another one. Well, the first one started to hit the second one. <laughs> Remember that? He said, me first. Don't not hurt me first, you know. 
That was a tremendous spiritual condition for healings and miracles, you know. <laughs> but that's the, those are the soldiers that the Holy Spirit said, go home. It didn't condemn them. It said, go home. Do you need to drink tomorrow? Drink again. Sit here. Wait. And let those guys do the job. Then you can all enjoy the liberation. But if it lasts, it's going to last because of them, not because of you. So these here were watching in the spirit. Why do they watch in the spirit? Because they're in an army. Why are they in their army? Because they're not doing their own thing. Because there's something bigger than their own life and their own little spiritual experiences. Because they live for the kingdom of God. Because they're disciplined. They're oriented. They have a goal in life. Those are the ones that Jesus is talking about in John 4 when he just finished and said, I'm satisfied by doing the will of my Father. And now you guys, he didn't condemn them. He said, now you guys open up your eyes and see. You say the harvest is three months from now. Who I tell you the harvest is right now? Amen. Now who will take that harvest? Not these guys. They're not going to take it. They're going to go home and wait. They need another dose before they get motivated to go out and buy a hamburger. But these guys, they live for Jesus. Amen. They don't just come into church. You know. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's a long meeting going. When is it time to go home? <laughs> no, no, no. They're different. They're different. They don't live for church. They just are in church every once in a while. They don't need it. They... Yeah, they do in one sense, but they add to it every time they come. And the preacher doesn't have to pump them for two hours before they wake up and start receiving either. Yes. They got a hunger in their lives because they're out where they are supposed to be. They are in reality. When you're in reality, it's healthy. When you're in reality, you get strong. When you're in reality, <laughs> your priorities are set straight. And you're not into some little phony club that emphasizes absolutely minor things and thrives on that and just ends up washed away somewhere, empty, tired, dead. That's not what God has for you. He has a real refreshing, because everybody needs it. Everybody needs water. That's not the question. The question is not, and let God, God can let the water come any way he wants. He can bring it to you any way he wants, how he wants. That's not our business. Just be sure it's water. Uh, or put it like this way. If God wants to give you wine, drink as much as you can. Just be sure it's wine, not vinegar. Vinegar looks like wine, but it doesn't taste like it. It gives a... <laughs> so if you get a so-called blessing and you start going... <laughs> you know it's not the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit produces a sweet, mellow flow of appreciation and love, right words, strength, true independence of people and dependency of God. Your motives are getting straight and you're activated every day to work for Jesus. I went over big, didn't it? <laughs> to work for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So praise God for the refreshing of the Holy Spirit. But don't be a worshiper of it. Be a follower of Jesus. Thank God that he refreshes today thousands upon thousands of people. But where will you take it? And what will you do with it? Are you here? Yeah. Praise God for the watering of the Holy Spirit so that you get mellow in your life. But God's going to turn that into fire. Yeah. Because Jesus said, I will baptize you with fire. Now what is fire? Fire is not just going around with smoke coming out of your nose. <laughs> no, no. Fire is a holy zealousness. Fire is a holy determination that will never quit. Fire is something that will motivate you forever. It'll burn down the stuff that is not right. It'll warm up your life and all that. 
and and and, and, and so that, that's what fire will do but it's more it's just it, it's a cleansing thing you know takes away the stuff from the silver and the gold makes it even purer refines it by fire the bible says yeah. but the fire is something in your bones when everybody else quit you will not quit when everybody else compromises, you cannot compromise. When everybody else goes home, you stay. When everybody else gripes and complains, you will not gripe and complain. When everybody moans and rebels, you will not moan. You will not rebel. When everybody else backslides, you will keep on going. When everybody else goes in thousand different directions, you know where you're supposed to go, and you will go, and you will not have your reward from men, your appreciation from men, but you'll have it from God himself. Hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore. Glory be to God forevermore. So if you want to get something, get the real thing. And when you get it, keep it. Develop it. Use it. And go all over the world with it. Now, some people said, don't merchandise the anointing, and I agree with that, and uh, that, that's absolutely true. But let's put it in a positive way. Let's merchandise it. Let's take it and bring it all over the world. Now, the price for this merchandise is free. But let's take it everywhere. Sell it on the streets. Give it to every nation. There's such a lack of missionaries today is pathetic. There's so many just staying home in the comfort zone, wallowing around in their own emotions and wondering why they have to go to counseling every time. Of course, you've got to go to counseling if you don't even know who you are. Of course you get it. And, and their marriages is breaking up and their kids are running all over the place. Of course, because they are not satisfied in doing the will of their father. You do the will of your father. Oh, you will be blessed. Your children will be blessed. Your home will be blessed and God can take your home and put it on the other side of the world and you don't even yeah. care at yeah. all. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, glory be to God. You are free at last. You are free at last. You are dead and you're resurrected. You're happy. You're full of joy. And God is using you and you love it. And you don't want to give it away for anything. Let them keep their millions and their boats and their cars and their villas and verandas and whatever they have. Because they're all going to go to hell with it anyway. You don't even need it. And if you need it, God will give it to you. And if you really want it and pray according to the word, you'll get it. But if you just desire it because you want to live a little nice Christian life and I want to have this little house, you know, and get me and my kids, you know, get them this pension here now and this, uh, uh, get secure for the future. Pfft, you live a terrible life. A boring, terrible life with dead eyes. And you, after a while you won't even come to church because you're so weak, you don't know. Oh, if you can make it to church, it's so hot and my air conditioner is broken in the car. <laughs> what a waste of good material. You know, m people are good material, but what a waste of good material. They could be sturdy, strong missionaries, and they walk around, and he hurt me, and he done hate him, and, him, and I, don't know, I don't like this, and baby, me put on CNN. <laughs> what a terrible life, but it's not a life for you and me. Amen? Because we have been set free. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what is the meaning of life? To glorify God and to make disciples. That is the meaning of life. And you'll be so fulfilled. You don't even know how fulfilled you'll be. And all the people said, Amen. Stand up and praise him. I think Brother Summer wants to say something and I get right back up again. Don't go away. Don't go away. I'll stay. Okay, I'll stay. <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen. Oh, glory be to God. Well, hallelujah! Amen! How beautiful it is to hear the servant of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. When he went back to his native Sweden, he was not received very greatly. <laughs> 
<laughs> by nobody. <laughs> yeah. It's better now. And uh, and we went and preached for him when he used the Noble Ice Arena. And uh, the Lord bless. <laughs> yes, very, very much. Hallelujah. I have a whole sermon on that. Hallelujah. But I'll preach that tomorrow. Tomorrow's Father's Day. I'll preach that, uh, preach that tomorrow. All oh, right. Yes. Uh, and... and uh, and now he has a lovely church that uh, seats 5,002 or three. Christian Center Cathedral of Praise, Alf Ekman, finishing up his message tonight from Jubilee 95 from South Bend, Indiana. And we really appreciate the fact that you've taken the time to join us here this evening and would encourage you to call the number on your screen. Frontline <laughs> counselors are standing by right now for your call. 1-800-365-3732. Kimberly Ann is here. And uh, Kim, quite a message from Alf Ekman tonight. And even though, as Scott Anderson mentioned earlier tonight, each of our speakers are different in their own right, right. the message is the same, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And I noticed one similarity that they touched on. Uh, he talked tonight about being hungry. And uh, he was talking about how a lot of Christians today are dissatisfied because they don't want to do the will of their father. They just want to, you know, have a variety show, get entertained, get tickled a little bit, but don't challenge me, you know, don't convict me, you know, and uh, he talked about, hey, it all gets down to, you got to be hungry, and you got to really want it. You don't want something that just keeps you, you know, satisfied, tickled for a night. I mean, it's, it's it, a true gospel should change your life, change your tongue, what you say out of your mouth, change your, you know, make you holy. You know, those two different spirits could be, other spirit or the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit makes you holy. Mm. You know, it was That's good, good tonight. I enjoyed it. It was good. I took a lot of notes and you know, I'm going to be looking over them again tonight. So. Great, great. Yeah. Well, Jesus Christ can make the change in your life. He can mm -hmm. make that kind of a yeah. change. And if you're dealing with problems that you can't on your own overcome, I tell yeah. you, you can make the contact tonight with our Heavenly Father through the prayer line counselor and make it happen. 1-800-365-3732. Phone lines are hopping, and yeah. I, I know you're aware of some of the calls that have been coming in. Yeah. Uh, we had one I wanted to touch on was uh, a gal named Helena, and she called, and she received Christ, and she didn't even know who Jesus was, and she didn't even know we had a prayer line. So I'm like, wow, I mean, that's fantastic. Isn't so, that great? And then after, as I was telling you before, after we <clears throat> got done with our broadcast, I went up and worked at prayer line for about an hour, and as soon as I got up there, we had six calls backed up, and I uh, talked with a few different people. Talked with a gal from Louisiana named Susan, and she was just real sweet. And, uh, you know, she just had, you know, some needs. She needed some Christian friends. She was watching the camp meeting, and she realized, hey, you know what, I'm not plugged into a church. I really need to do that. Can you pray with me about that? And another lady, the first phone call I had was a, a lady who had uh, demonic spirits in her house, you know, right at that moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, doing things and stuff and so I mean we had to get serious right away so you know those prayer line counselors when they go up there they're not playing games and they're not you know they go up there ready and prepared they have to be and so you know in full confidence and trust you can call them and they're not just going to give you some flip glib answer and oh, I can't wait to get to the next phone call I mean they're, they're they'll take care of you specifically yeah so. yeah that's great Kim that's really good you know tomorrow is Sunday and you touched on it you touched on it you need to get grounded in a church yeah. And we're talking to people now throughout the United States, into Canada, South America, by way of television, and certainly uh, overseas on shortwave radio. But wherever it is that you're watching, make a point to, to visit a church tomorrow. If maybe it's been a while since you've been to a church, get grounded. Yeah. Acquaint yourself with a good local church. And maybe, yeah. uh, you know, after this week is done, we'll look back and we'll say, you know, the messages were great, but in the end, maybe it encouraged someone to get back into the Word, get right. back into church, and that's where it's right. at. Prayer line counselors, again, can help you through that process, and I would imagine they might even be able to put you in touch with a church in your local area. So give them a call, 1-800-365-3732. Prayer line counselors, Patty Ellis, the director, and you know, mm -hmm. Patty's always looking for a few good men oh, and women. Yeah who can volunteer their time, and uh, we're broadcasting live in South Bend, Indiana tonight, and I would think Patty would probably take a few more volunteers, wouldn't mm -hmm. she, Kim? I would say so, most yeah. definitely. You know, we can always use more volunteers for the Absolutely. A so. couple of hours a week, a yeah. couple of hours a month, it makes no difference. And that's what's exciting. I mean, if someone's listening tonight and, you know, they've wondered, how can I get plugged in? I'm getting all excited about these messages, and I know there's something I need to be doing. 
I tell you, there's nothing better to get your foot in the door and start stepping up and then start praying for other people. Right. And so this might be a doorway in for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Folks, this has been a great week. And yeah. we want to also tell you about a very special offer going on this week for those of you that are watching the camp meeting festivities here on the Sea Broadcasting. In November, beginning November 7th for 10 days, Dr. Summerall once again will take a tour group to Israel, the Holy Land tour. We go to the Holy Land twice each year, and Dr. Summerall goes back each and every year, and he's been doing that for years on end. If you'd like to be a part of that Holy Land tour, you can call right now at that number on your screen, 1-800-365-3732. That special offer we've been talking about is the one-day excursion to Masada within the Holy Land package. Now, this normally would be an additional few hundred dollars, but if you call right now, put your $100 deposit down on the Holy Land tour, you're going to receive that Masada tour excursion, not for $300, not for $200, not for $100, not for $50, not for $25, Kim. Oh, come on, Craig. It's, it's free. Oh. It's free. A free trip to Masada if you sign up this week for the Holy Land tour and put down a hundred dollar deposit mm. oh, with your Visa, MasterCard, uh, Discover, uh, those credit cards are accepted here. Give the number on the on the screen a call, 1-800-365-3732. It's a great, great offer. Wow. $18.95 for the entire trip and that covers just about everything and for kids uh, I believe the price is $16.95. Well, David Binion is standing by. The music's been great, hasn't oh, it, Kim? Yes, it has. Oh, I've loved the music. Mm -hmm. And David right now is going to uh, sing a song for us all. And again, that'll give you a chance to run to the phone, give the prayer line counselor a call. Do it now. Wonderful way, maker worthy of my offering. Hallowed be thy name. You are love, you are love, you are life, you are Lord over us. Alpha Omega, Jehovah, the King of Kings. Wonderful way, maker worthy of my offering. Hallowed be thy name. You're the answer to all of my problems, and you solve them. You have a father. Yes, you're a mighty fortress in a time of tribulation. Hallowed be thy name. And I'm more than a conqueror in every situation. Hallowed be thy name. You are love. You are love. You are light. You are Lord.
and it'll put it into you. You don't have to try to make it up. Don't imitate anybody else. Don't try to get a word everywhere. Just read the word and you'll get a word. Don't worry about it. But God will impress it in your spirit and it will be there and he'll confirm it in many different ways through prophecies, through experiences. Now, the gospel is an experience. Paul had an experience. The disciples had an experience. Something happened in their lives and it motivated them. So God will give you all the experiences you need. We're not living a, a, a dry life of just the letter. We're being led by the Spirit, amen? But we're not seeking certain things. We're seeking Jesus. And he'll give you whatever you need. And the Holy Spirit will manifest the way he wants. And you're going to be satisfied. So if you have that, I want you to come up. If you have this dream is there and it's like unfulfilled, just come up in Jesus' name. The Holy Spirit will manifest to you. Manifest and, and he'll bless you and he'll yes, let it just come up. Oh Rabashila Labakari Urabila Sila Manda Masabla still in it. There's a precious anointing here. Now remember, there are no shortcuts to glory. You can be a stubborn little Israelite in the desert. And God will give you manna to survive every day. Or you can be an inhabitant of the land and you live by sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping takes effort, energy, time. And it's not so emotional all the time. It's not so funny all the time. But you will reap. And you will reap so much and you'll be so satisfied. If you look at a farmer, he doesn't look so sharp all the time he just got his dirty clothes on standing with a hand in the pocket but he's got fields everywhere the fields are ripe and he is happy that's your life that's your life are you here or not please respond don't look like you're dead that's your life i said i said it's your life look at those fields they represent your life. Jesus said, lift up your eyes. Look at those fields. And they are ready for harvest. So there's something right now in your life that is ready for harvest. And you'll see it. So we're going to push it through in the spirit. But you have to sow and then you'll reap. You have to sow and then you'll reap. You cannot believe that God's going to give you an additional experience. And then you don't have to do your ordinary job in the, you know, as a Christian. The ordinary things, you have to do that. Then God will add his blessing and his strength and his anointing and it will become reality. Not just a fad, not just a little thing that you have to be in a certain meeting to experience, but it will be a part of your life wherever you are. Amen. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Uh, how much uh, are you willing to pay to get it? Well, it's easy to say that. But you know, there is, the gospel is free, but there's a price you have to pay. There's a price to seek, there's a price to work, there's a price to obey. There's a price tag on everything. Just look at the price tag, let the Holy Spirit touch you, and you say, I'm willing to pay that, and God will give it to you. The storehouses of heaven are full with things with tags on. And all God wants you to do is look at it. Now, here's a miracle, that's the price. Here's a uh, change family, here's the tag, here's the price for that. And, here's, and you just look at it. And you say, Jesus, I'll pay that. And God will do the rest. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Yeah. Let's raise our hands. What song are you playing on, brother? 
Holy Ghost. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's sing that one. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Oh, oh! Wonderful. Oh. Holy Ghost. The wind's blowing strong. And it's, it's blowing from heaven. heaven. Sing it like you mean it. Holy Ghost. Yes. Wonderful. You know, sometimes when you sing a song like that, you look like you're on drugs. <laughs> no, Holy Ghost. Now, it's, it's a mellow song, but don't get into that because your, uh, your spirit needs to be out there, you know, it needs to be active, receiving, and your voice needs to be loud. Jesus never, and Paul never, and Peter never whispered the gospel. They preached the gospel, he says. They preached it. So when you preach and when you pray, open your mouth. Amen? Don't be a reserved Christian, you know, laid back California style, sleeping on the surfboard type of Christian. No, 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 be active in your spirit. It doesn't mean some people get overboard, you know, they get very active. Ah, 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 all the time. You don't have to be that. Just get active in your spirit. So as we sing it, get active now in your spirit. Amen. Yes. Oh, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Wonderful Holy Ghost. The wind's blowing strong. You too. And it's blowing from heaven. Right 
Line him up, line him up, hurry up, come on, come on, what are you waiting for? You're waiting for Christmas or something? Get up there. Amen. Oh, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Jesus. Don't, don't, don't get out in that jazzy stuff. Just stay very, very simple and, and so the high praises can come, you know. Oh, because otherwise you pull them out in their emotions. Shila mahadiri lida hadiri Oh, oh. Oh, 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 in the of the Holy Spirit. Oh, 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 Yes, satisfaction in your life it's from doing the will of the father right now make up your mind what are you going to do are you going to be receiving all, all the time or are you going to be a blessing i feel the power of god so strong just to encourage you this is this is what this camp meeting has been speaking all week long it's time for us to be a blessing now right now there is a strong anointing present to help you release burdens heal your broken heart release bitterness frustration so that you'll be able to step into a place to do what god's called you to do because there's a wonderful plan for your life and people are waiting for you to touch their life with the gospel will you do that tonight or are you going to spend another day or another week or another month in frustration wondering what new thing from heaven you can receive Oh, no, we don't want another experience. Thank God for the experiences, but we want Jesus. We want Jesus more than anything else. Let's pray right now. Let's you and I pray right now. You can call the prayer line in a minute. If you've never surrendered your heart to Jesus, that is a servant. If we call Jesus Lord, it means he's our master. He's our controller. He's the one that tells us where to go and what to do. Are you ready to surrender your life today? Oh, I can guarantee you, great things ahead of you. The life of giving to people and living out of your spirit, like Jesus said, I have meat, I have satisfaction that you don't know of. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, here I am. Take my life. I'll serve you. I'll live for you. I'm not concerned on what I can get. I'm, I'm concerned about being a blessing in the earth. Take my life. I dedicate it to you. Take my life. I will live for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed, if you prayed with me, call the prayer line. 
Our prayer counselors would like to pray with you some more. They, they have scriptures to give you. They, they, they want to be a blessing to you. See, they're already starting this. The world needs you. Now, right where you're at, lift your hands up. I said earlier, there's a strong anointing to remove burdens and to destroy yokes. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. Right where you are, it seems that that dream is forever gone. It's not forever gone. It's very close to you right now. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we want to bring it back. We want to position you to receive and to, and to be that giver of life and joy that Pastor Rolf Ekman preached about tonight. Isn't this wonderful? It's not a game. You ready to have that broken heart healed? Right now, begin to release and to forgive those of you that were uh, hurt in your emotions and rejected and, and abused and tormented. Right now, release. Say, God, I forgive those people. You came up you just I, I forgive. I forgive. Okay. I, I'll not let that hold me back any longer. That was, that's where they Call the prayer before. line. But, but we Call the prayer them. line. We so much want to help you. We want to help you. We want you to fulfill your destiny now that you know what the life of a wonderful Christian is all about. Right now, let's go back into the sanctuary. anybody else, and this is what I said, this is what you're supposed to be included in. Then you stand here. Nobody else. Because there are other blessings, you know, that will come to you anyway. So don't, don't worry about how it comes. Don't worry about it. Everybody else, nobody else, good. Okay, let's raise our hands. Oh, Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Yeah, good, good, good. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. God will give you a determination in your spirit. God will give you a holy seriousness about the call. God will... Uh, strengthen you tremendously God will make you real yes so you laugh when you're supposed to laugh you cry when you're supposed to cry you sit when you're supposed to sit you stand when you're supposed to stand you flow with the Holy Spirit and you're not pushed off into all kinds of things you know what's going on and you're being led by the Spirit and you never ever give up you never ever give up you never ever give up you never ever 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 give up Jesus name Jesus name and you'll go to the ends of the world. You'll go to the ends of the earth. You go to the ends of the world. Say, I am going. going. To the ends of the earth. The of the earth. Holy, Spirit. Holy Spirit. That's why I have you. Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Lead me. Lead me. I am willing. Lord. I will go. Lord. Wherever you send me. You send me. Here I am. Lord. Send me. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. For your anointing. Thank you, Jesus, for your dreams in my spirit. They will come to pass. They will come to pass. They will come to pass. In Jesus' name. Raise up your hands and praise him. Keep on playing, brother. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, keep on playing and singing, brother. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, oh, wow. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, hallelujah, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the anointing that Jesus of Nazareth, yes, take it, take it, take it, Jesus' name, come on, come on, brother, oh, oh, yes, oh, Jesus, who is with him? Is that you? Oh, it's on you, brother. It's on you and on you, too. Yes. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, in Jesus' name. Yes, in Jesus' name. Be revived! Oh, in Jesus' name. Oh, in the name, 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 in the name of Jesus Christ. Be revived, be strong. Yeah, for the purpose that which you are called, let it flow. Oh, Jesus name let it come let it come out in the name of Jesus Christ Holy Ghost <laughs> never answer <laughs> now let's cut the line Ooh. now I said you know it's a cut the line now but those that are come up it's okay but after that you know it's okay okay so you are sure you know what you're doing let's keep on singing 
Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, in the name. In Jesus' name, just take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Oh, there it is. Yes, take it. Take it. Take it. Don't argue about it. No, just take it. Yes, where are you from? Yeah, hallelujah. Where? Are you raised brother-in-law? Glory be to God. Where are you? Are you from the Beit Sahul? I was in Beit Sahul last week. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, brother. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Yamanya, Yasamune. Oh. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let it just come, let it come over. There it is. It's for you, 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 it's for you. And take it, take it, it's for you, it's for you. Yes, yes, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, yes, take it, take it. It's for you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' mighty name. Receive it, brother. Receive it, receive it. Don't fight it. Receive it. In Jesus' name. There it is. It's right there. It's right there for you. It's right there for you. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Are you a preacher? Are you a preacher? Yes, I'm gonna have Yes, I'm gonna have Fire up and go. To be on your life now. Let it come. Let it come. Don't let your mind be on the way. Don't forget about everybody else. And let it flow strong now. Your hands, your mind. Yes. Be saturated by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. There it is. Take it now. Take it now. Don't resist it. Take it. Please. There it is. Oh, it's right there. Yes. In Jesus' name. We call it for the blood. I can't. The streams go strong. And it's so good. Let's raise our hands. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, just raise your hands and praise him. Oh, raise your hands and praise him. Oh, please raise your hands and praise him. Please, let's let, let the glory and let the praise. Go to the Father right now. Don't worry about what time it is. Don't worry about what you feel or think. Now just praise Him. Praise Him. Hallelujah. 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 Ha, 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 ha. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus' name, let your word be strong in everyone. Let that banner shibre, that seed, be very strong in each and every one, and let it, Father, that dream come to pass. Devil, I come against you. How dare you steal the word of the living God? How dare you steal the dream that our Father put in their hearts and in their spirits? In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we rebuke you. We rebuke you. Go! 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 In Jesus' name. Father, we seal the dream and the vision with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that it's sealed and it's paid for through the blood of Jesus. Father, we pray for a harvest out of these people here tonight and those watching on television. Harvest, hundredfold, harvest in the lives of every believer that the Satan cannot steal or stop or hinder or delay or uh, disappoint or embitter anybody. No, they will fulfill their course. They will do their ministry. They will be a blessing. 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 Oh, hallelujah. And Father, you will multiply the great commission and you will send laborers to the ends of the earth. Out of this group, Father, and those watching on television, you will send missionaries. Do not allow them, Holy Spirit, if you've called them to missionaries, to stop and stay home. 
Do not allow them. Make them restless. Make them miserable, Holy Spirit, until they obey you. And they will get a good life. The real abundant life. Not the fake. Not the deception. Not the counterfeit. Not the compromise. The real thing, Father. Real Holy Ghost power. Real miracles. Real lasting fruit. Real joy. Ha, 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 ha. Sheila Bakahaya. Sheila Bakahaya. Shayanda Kabahaya. Father, I come against any form of uh, rebellion or just despising the message of faith. The just shall live by faith, Father. Shall live by faith, by your word, believe you. And any form of attack, any form of pulling the believers away from the faith walk, I resist it, I come against it in Jesus' name. They shall not be tired and they shall not complain. They shall walk by faith from glory to glory. And you will confirm, Father, the word in their spirits, the signs and wonders and miracles. And all the people said, Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Alf Ekman from Christian Center Cathedral of Praise during Jubilee 95. Alf Ekman with the largest Bible school in all of Europe. And my goodness, uh, this man can yeah. preach too, can mm -hmm. he? Mm -hmm. Known for his preaching and his writing. Off Ekman tonight during Jubilee. It's been a great week, folks. We've got one more night to go. Steve Muncy tomorrow night. And we've got all kinds of time for you to respond. The number's on your screen, 1-800-365-3732. And again, that missionary theme prevails again this evening, Kim. Oh, yeah. It was good. He just hit on so many important things that I was really eating it up. I've yeah. enjoyed it very much. I know. You've yeah. been taking great notes. Yeah. And I tell you, folks, if you want to capture...